Looking for a jump start on a cool project? Maybe something for Halloween or your next convention? Keep watching for how you can make this mask base for what I've been told by many people is their favorite dinosaur. Hi, I'm Kazool and welcome to my lair. Now I know it's been a little while, but I'm back to show you how to put together my newest mask pattern. It's another dinosaur, this time the Parasaurolophus. First, let's start off with the materials you'll need. I want you to navigate over onto my beautiful website. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to find where to purchase this pattern from. It'll come as a PDF to you that you can then print out at home. To cut out the pattern, you'll need some scissors and tape. And if you're feeling fancy, you can get one of these pattern notchers. They're really handy. You'll also need some pens to transfer the pattern to your foam. I like this one with four colors on it. Uh, you'll see why that's important. You'll also need some foam. This is six millimeter HD foam from SKS Props. I prefer six millimeter. Five millimeter and four millimeter will also work. To cut the foam, you'll need a nice sharp blade. I like these snap-off blades used for carpet. Uh, to do some of the details, you might need a finer blade like this scalpel. For the glue, I like to use this Dual 88, but any contact cement like barge or wood weld will work too. To hinge the pattern, you'll need elastic and hot glue. So you got the pattern and printed it out. Just go with the page layout to know where the, in, the, the pieces that cross over are so you can tape the pattern together. To tape it, just butt the two pieces up together and run a piece of tape across. There will be some areas where the printer doesn't print, uh, but if you just butt the pieces up together and you know guess along that little portion, it'll be fine. Uh, here's a look at how that pattern notcher works. All the green lines on the pattern you'll need to cut out. You can do that with your scissors by just cutting out a little V, but the pattern notcher just makes it easy in one step. On this pattern, there's two pieces labeled 1A and 1B. You can tape those together and cut them out as one piece or cut them out separate and just glue along that seam. It's up to you. And then it's time to transfer your pattern to your foam. I like to trace the lines in the color of what they are on the pattern. So any blue lines I trace with a blue pen, the green lines I mark with green, red lines with red, or in this case, I'm using a pink pen and so forth. It just helps me keep track of the pattern pieces. On this lighter color foam, it's nice to be able to, to draw with different colors and with a ballpoint pen instead of a Sharpie or something. Then we move on to cutting out the pattern pieces. Now, each different color line refers to a different way in cutting it out, and these are called bevels. You will angle your blade inward or outward from the pattern about 45 degrees, depending on what it is. See the blue lines, you're angling your blade inward. And for the red line or pink line in this case, you're angling your blade outward. These bevels are really important because they give the final form shape and personality. Some of them, some of the lines, like on this big old long part of the head, show a little bit of a transition between cutting at an angle and cutting straight. Um, the best way to do that is just move carefully down along the line and shifting. Um, on the pattern, the colored block line is there to help you visualize where the bevel should be. And 
once you've got all your pieces cut out, it's time for gluing. Now, contact cement is nasty stuff. It works great, but it's nasty for your health. So wear a respirator and gloves to keep yourself safe and always work in a well-ventilated area. The way contact cement works is you paint a thin layer on all the surfaces that you want to glue first. You let it dry until it gets to a tacky state, and then you press those two seams together and it'll form an instant bond. So the registration marks here, seen here in green are just to help you line it up. So you can see you might have to stretch the foam a little bit, but those lines will help guide you as you press these two pieces together. It kind of is like a zipper and these lines are like the teeth. So just try, try your best to keep it lined up. If things aren't quite getting there, foam is quite squishy, so you can stretch and pull it a bit, but it should come together very nicely. Now when I'm gluing, I like to glue all the smaller shapes into bigger groupings first. You can see here the order I go in. I also list this order in the instructions that come with the pattern so you know how exactly to put it together. It's really satisfying on long parts, the, the longest parts of this pattern, putting it together. It just really does feel like a zipper. So the basic idea is that you want to assemble the two halves of the face and then glue those halves together. Oh, I forgot one tool that you'll need. A little heat gun to help set a curl in this part of the jaw will help get that back piece on a little more easily. It's not strictly necessary, it'll just make your life easier. Ooh, so these are the mouth plates. What I like to do is take and draw along a line along the inside of the mouth about a half inch in and that'll be a guide for where to put some glue. So I'll put paint some glue on that inside edge. Um, this is a little different than uh, painting just the edges of the foam. But that'll, that'll help set the mouth plate in place. The mouth plate is important to give the head a little bit more structure to hold its shape so it doesn't just kind of fall to gravity's sake. Anyways, on this longest part of gluing together, it kind of helps to put, put a few inches of one end together and then switch to the other side and kind of go go along a little ways on both sides uh, meeting in the middle that's the easiest way that i found to do it So flipping around to the inside, this mouth plate will be very important to get right. This this will help keep the head even, so be very careful trying to place this. And there's the top half of the head all done. Same thing with the jaw piece. 
You can see it lines up in the corners and just press together. Now we're almost done. It's just going to be setting that jaw in place and hinging it next. I just cut out two sections of a couple of inches of elastic. Here's showing a little bit of how that lines up. But anyway, you glue the elastic onto the jaw piece first. And hot glue holds firm enough here. Then you'll want to line it up inside the head to where you want it and then glue it into the top part of the head. This part is tricky. It just takes a little bit of finesse. You might have to rip out your elastic and, and reset it if you didn't get it quite perfect. Or it might take some shaving away of some foam on the inside if things are catching. But it should be pretty close. And here's the finished base. Now this could be sanded down a little bit. It could just be painted as is. You could seal it up with something and then paint it. I want to try like taking some of the foam clay and sculpting on top of it. My eye kits that I make in my and sell in my Etsy shop would look great in this. So maybe you should check that out or make some of your own. So there it is. It's all ready for you to run wild with your creativity. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed seeing how I put this together and I hope that you go out and get the pattern and show me what you can do, like especially with Halloween around the corner. Yeah, if you want to be your favorite dinosaur, buy my pattern. Um, anyways, I know I've been absent for a little bit. I just wanted to take a little break and reprioritize my time, but I really, really, really wanted to get all my dinosaur patterns out and done before October, uh, just in case anybody wanted to build their favorite dino for Halloween. Um, so I do have the Triceratops pattern. It's done. I haven't made a video about it yet. Um, I probably need to do that. Um, and I also have a T-Rex. Let me get that out. Here, it's sitting right here. Uh, this T-Rex uh, needs, the pattern needs a little work, but I'm gonna finish it before October. Oh my goodness, too many masks sitting around. You see, here's like one of the prototypes of the Parasaur. So anyways, thank you again for watching. I'm Kazool reminding you to embrace your inner beast.